Hello and welcome back to Green Valley Zoo. Glad to have you here with me, hope you're well. So today we are putting in another lake and yeah I know I did water in the last episode and it's kind of inspired me a little bit because I enjoyed putting the seals in. So I wanted to do more. Um, so I had to think about what other animals there are that need water and where in the zoo I've got a nice area for a lake and I thought this area over here made sense. Um, see lake, lakes are quite handy because you can you can put them in any shape and and here was a it was an odd shape um, you know quite a big area between two other areas with a bit of a pointy bit at the end so it um, it kind of made sense to make this into some sort of natural looking place so that's what I decided and I went with flamingos I've always loved flamingos and I thought it'd be interesting to do them and a bit different because they don't need deep water they only need very shallow water because they like to wade that's how they they get their food and they spend most of their time in shallow water just walking around and sifting through the mud and the silt and the sand um, trying to find food and they flock in their thousands in some places um, you know literally tens of thousands in one place and it looks remarkable it really does not that I put tens of thousands in here but I, I think I put about 30 in 30 or 40 something like that so it, it looks pretty pretty good they they fill it up quite nicely um, so you can see I did put a, a small area of deep water as well because they do like to swim a small amount so there is a bit of a, a deep area there as well but most of this is very shallow as you can see it took me a couple of attempts to make it deep enough I, the first time I did it it wasn't deep enough for the water to actually go in so the water in the game works in one meters so it needs to be at least a meter deep for you to put water in and so my, my grand plan here uh, I knew I wanted something in the middle so I wanted some sort of restaurant or cafe in the middle here and it turned out to be quite big which is it's good it, it works really nicely it turns out fantastic but it's slightly maybe bigger than I planned but I made the area bigger than I planned so it worked out just fine and I wanted I wanted it to be a real viewing area so I just sort of kept on adding in all these little viewing balconies and then obviously I needed to connect it to the outside so the the two corner places I connect outside um yeah I, I, it, it worked out really nicely actually um it looks nice with the multi levels as well and obviously around this side you where you've got the deep water I've got a viewing balcony right over that as well and yeah I mean it obviously doesn't look good at the moment but these things never do when they're being developed so the barrier goes right around this area and right down into this corner here with the Jaguar restaurant and um, and then I stick a flamingo in and that's when my problem started because obviously I wanted the barriers to look natural I didn't want uh, any sort of fence or anything I wanted it to be natural barriers similar to what I did with the seals um, it turns out a little different but not much I mean I, I obviously I do basically the same when you do piles of rocks around the outside but of course flamingos are a bit different to seals because flamingos can fly uh, certainly in the game they don't fly completely but they can flap and and take off just about and get up onto some rocks so it was a bit of an issue trying to work out how to stop them escaping certainly it took me a long time because they could get up onto the platforms as well the path platforms that i'd made around the restaurant so not only did i have to cover in the outside i also had to do a lot of work around the inside before they could escape uh, not escape as you can see there's quite a big jump there because i spent a good hour doing the rock work and um you didn't want to see that it was boring <laughs> quite frankly uh, pretty repetitive uh, as, as anyone who's played this game knows um, you know some of these bits of decoration can be very repetitive so I did the rock work around the outside and, and got that looking good and it was all fine and they couldn't escape there but they could still get up onto these platforms in the middle so I thought okay well I'm gonna do barriers around these platforms anyway so I needed to get them in early 
just to stop as you can see the flamingo is up on the top there and he kept legging it and disappearing into the zoo so I had to keep on uh, bringing him back so I thought get these barriers in and at least stop him escaping and then I can stop worrying about that and uh, start worrying about other stuff so you can see he's still flapping around on the rocks I put those barriers in and I was hoping that would stop him getting up there uh, but no it didn't he could still climb on these rocks so then I thought okay well I don't want to put any fencing so let's do something natural and of course these reeds not only do they look good but they act as a barrier so that's what I do I, I, I make a barrier out of reeds I make a little blueprint here and I, I just do a bit of copy and pasting and it works um, thank God because I didn't have another solution to be honest and I just put these all around this middle area and it looks great because obviously it's it's a very natural looking thing it doesn't look like it's there as a barrier it looks like the reeds have just grown naturally which is exactly what I wanted and it's yeah it turns out very nicely I'm really happy with it so that's um, that's how I stopped my flamingo escaping um, I was a bit worried at first because he was up there and I suddenly I, I did this and I looked and I thought oh god he can still get out so obviously I had to, had to block this end here that was pretty obvious um, but once I picked him up and then put him back down on the ground again it worked he couldn't then flap his way up onto the pathways again so yes it, it took a bit of work to get there um, but I got there in the end as you can see he's still up there at the moment and I was looking at that thinking what is going on why is he only up there and he can't go down and of course I realize it's because he's already up there so he, he can't get past the reeds to come back down again uh, so I just had to pick him up move him here and boom there you go <laughs> now he can't escape and he's actually navigating around the areas that I want him to phew such a pain these animals aren't they if only, if only we could have a zoo without the animals it'd be uh, it'd be so peaceful and easy wouldn't it so then I thought I'd get going on this building in the middle and this caused me a few issues as well because I wanted to fill in these gaps here with pathway uh, but I just couldn't get the the shops in the right place to be connected to the path and allow me to fill in these corners so I didn't in the end I just uh, I just left it as it was and I put a fake floor down instead which does the job just fine I was planning on doing that anyway um, but I, it just meant I had to change the design of the building a little bit but it, it wasn't a big problem um, so you can see here my usual thing of just using the ceiling as a, uh, a floor which is fine I really you know I really like the look of it and it, it's not great once the people are in because they obviously they clip through the floor and their feet disappear inside it but it's it's a small detail really uh, for, for an easy solution so I wanted the uh, the roof of the building I knew I wanted that to be uh, sort of a, a tall pointy uh, roof and then I decided uh, underneath I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do at the bottom here you can see I try out a couple of different corners and in the end I actually chose to go with the rounded corner because I thought it the rounded shape contrasted the pointy roof and yeah I'm no architect but I, I liked to have that sort of contrast of shapes on a building if I can I just think it works better than having the same sh sharp points everywhere so that's what I went with you know nothing fancy here I like this asphalt roof it it's it's effective it looks nice and it, it is the sort of roof that you see on in in zoos and things uh, because it's relatively cheap it's long lasting it's durable it does the job so yeah I, I don't mind using it it's not the most exciting looking roof um, but what I do do actually uh, because you can see there's the four corner viewing areas as well I do put small buildings on them initially with the same roof but eventually I do change the roof on the four small bits and I actually do a, a custom roof so you'll see that later on here you can see I obviously I needed some supports around the outside of the roof because it just didn't look right overhanging so much so I put these archways on I then change them as you can see there quick jump and I've changed them into the wooden ones these look much nicer and I've put in this corner um, shelter as well as you can see I'm just putting in the barriers and stuff and then I just copy and paste it onto the other three corners and it looks really nice actually it's a very simple thing to do 
and I, I'm, I'm not too keen on having things symmetrical like this but actually having it on the corners I think it looks really nice it's um, it's, it's a really nicely shaped building once these four corners are in place and like I say I do change the roof on these four smaller areas as well yeah so I, th I think you can see there my my sort of my vision is coming together a bit still a lot more detail to do I've, you can see I've done some detailing on the on the middle of the building there where the actual restaurants are uh, I'll show you more of that later on in the real-time bit I needed a bit of light here so I, I decided to go with uh, one of these tall lights and then I put a picnic table in each one as well um, sort of over the top of the lights which I think looks nice it's somewhere for people to come and sit down and there's still room to walk around the tables as well so that worked out really nicely um, yeah lots of detailing to be done um, there was a lot that I did on the the building there which I'll show you later on in the real time bit here I wanted to do decorate the water a bit I didn't want it completely full up and overgrown um, I, I had the idea of using the papyrus there as you can see the papyrus wasn't traversable so I, I didn't want to use that so I create this small blueprint here with the eel grass and the reeds and I, I do copy and paste it around a bit but in the end I, I then looked at it and I didn't like the reeds I thought the eel grass looked really nice but the reeds didn't work particularly when you zoom out they don't have a very good draw distance on the reed so it does it doesn't actually look good but I, I just didn't like they there were too many they they weren't clumped together properly so I didn't like them so I do change that and I as you can see in a second I do just delete all of that and just go with the eel grass and it works really nice so I wanted this eel grass all around the outside so it looks like it's growing from the rocks and working its way towards the center of the water uh, which I think is how most things grow you know if you look at a river or a stream generally things are growing from the outside and over the years they slowly spread towards the middle so that was my thinking there and it looks really nice I'm, I'm really happy with how this turns out actually um, eventually you can see I put rock uh, terrain covering all along the floor but I do actually change that to mud in the end and it looks much better but this uh, this eelgrass really looks nice it's, it's such a nice plant and when you clump it together like this particularly in this sort of environment where it's all around the outside of the enclosure it um, yeah it just finishes off the area nicely makes it look really natural I do a bit of rock work as well you'll see in a minute I, I use my usual rubble rocks the um, sandy colored ones I think that's what I'm about to do now and I thought I could get away with these I mean they are traversable generally when they're in the water especially if you just sink them down a little bit so I could get away with it and I, I, I kept them the same color as well because I put beaches I put the sand around I thought I could get away with having sand colored rocks even though they're such a contrast to the moss rocks I think it works I think I can get away with it um, well I have got away with it because I've done it I'm not changing it now so yeah um yeah really happy with the look of these rocks you, you know my opinion on these rocks i think they are the greatest piece in the game and uh, they, it's just that small detail and i didn't want too many uh, you just again you just dot them you just do it randomly keep turning them try and randomize the the look a bit sink some in more than others and it really just finishes off an area very nicely you don't need to go over the top with it just scatter them around and it just makes it look natural it's the same whenever you're doing any sort of area like this where you want it to look natural don't overthink it don't over plan it you, you get your cursor ready and you just start dotting stuff around and you, inevitably you'll put some in the wrong place but you'll spot that when you zoom out and you start looking around eventually you you go right that that bit just doesn't quite look right let's redo that but on the whole if you just randomly dot like this you end up with it looking really nice because you want it to look random and natural um, so yeah it's uh, it's a pretty simple thing once you've done it a few times you sort of master the, the technique and I did want some of these reeds because they are a, a brilliant looking plant you know it's, it's a adds a bit of a, a different texture and a different color 
and so I, again I just randomly dot some around nothing too fancy just really just um, completely random not too many just enough just to fill in a few gaps here and there and it just finishes it off nicely because you don't want to hide the animals too much but you also don't want them massively exposed so you just you know just just gently fill the area in when it comes to the rocks here you can see I'm using this uh, this bush this scavola bush I don't know if that's how you pronounce it but it's it's a really nice thing I, I, I hadn't really used it before now actually but but it's it's a lovely looking leaf on this bush and there's quite a few different shades of green all in one plant as well so you can see that it, it really the light really hits it well and you get a lot of contrasting colors so actually even though it's green on green with the, the green mossy rocks they still really show up um, and look really nice and I didn't want a lot of color you'll see in a second I think I, I experimented with putting hydrangea bushes down on the rocks but it was just too much it, I, I realized it, it doesn't need bright color in this enclosure usually I like a bit of color to it to contrast all the green or, or, or all the rock color or whatever I've done but in this case it looked fine like it was it, it, the area looked better without color so I just I just left it as it was I uh, just didn't just didn't think it needed it you you might disagree but um, you know that's how it is and uh, and then I just wanted some trees and I thought because I put the beach in obviously uh, I thought some nice palm trees would look good you know I play these games to make things look good I don't necessarily care if it's appropriate to the animals it looks right it looks good I like the look of it the animals are fine because welfare is turned off so they're not going to moan and I just thought these trees looked really appropriate um, you know they're, they're lovely looking things so yeah that's what I went with and uh, I really like it and then around the middle I think I just go with some of the date palms again I just wanted something different around the middle just that slight um, variation and again just dotting a few around not too many not too few just enough just to, to fill in uh, a few blank areas and, and just add a bit of height around this rock work around the middle and yeah there is uh, a few more bits to show you so we're coming to the end of the time lapse here and um, I will do a real time bit so I will be right back with you in just a moment for that right so here we are back with our flamingos so this is the outside of the habitat uh, just a simple building here with the facilities inside so we've got a, a keep hut and a staff room inside here stuck with the same roof as the building inside um, just put these extra arches on the outside just to try and vary up the buildings a bit it's it's hard when you're doing these facility buildings to you don't want to spend hours over them um, but you also want them to look a bit different to each other um, so yeah pretty simple and outside here obviously just uh, you know covering up the, uh, the path edges with the moss continuing the theme of the moss rocks in there uh, right so let me head on in as you can see here I've got the same uh, stone wall here for the the gateway that I've done elsewhere let's follow the keeper in what is she up to just checking on them nice okay so what have we done in here oh look at them all they've all come over to see me isn't that nice ah uh, yes and our mystery animal there it is well there's one of them anyway pygmy hippos turns out that this habitat is absolutely perfect for them because again they they like the shallow water they've got the same sort of uh, traversability if that's a word as the flamingos um, and so they they go in here absolutely perfectly with the flamingos and in real life actually I know the game doesn't think they would go together uh, but actually in real life you do find them in the same areas so it's not that unbelievable and uh, I think they go really well together. I think they look great. Um, they they're clearly, you know, they're happy in it. So, yeah. And the flamingos look awesome, don't they? I mean, they, they the animation on these is, is just wonderful. It really is. 
So the, yeah, so what have we done in here? Okay, we've got, obviously there are some um, uh, enrichment items scattered around. So let's just wander, let's go this way. Um, so you can see around the edge here, there is the old bit of enrichment, uh, both hippo and flamingo, of course. There are, I think, eight hippos in here. Uh, so I like to play a little game of spot the hippo. They're never that far away. <laughs> they look so cool, don't they? And look at him, he couldn't be happier. Having a little wallow in the long grass. I'm going to call you Bob. Bob the hippo. What's your, oh god, oh yeah, see I can't pronounce that, so you're going to be Bob. And uh, you'll often find some of these hippos down it. Yeah, look at them all. They love this deep bit here. Even though they don't go uh, swimming as such, they do love to walk down into the deep water. So there's often a few of them lurking down here. Uh, let's keep on going. See, the flamingos like, do like a bit of a swim as well, but... I, I've got enough in here that there's always a flamingo in sight. You know, they—I they, I love the the way they they behave together. Actually, follow each other around, and they do hang around in flocks um, as well as going off on their own. And I just—I think this whole habitat has worked out so nicely. I love that they can go underneath the path here as well. If they choose to, they can be over here where obviously people can see them and get quite close to them. But there's plenty of areas in here where they can go where they can get away from people as well. There's another little hippo having a wander. A few more enrichments. I've got their, uh, the flamingo. Actually, what is this one? It's a food one, isn't it? Yeah, forage pool. There, uh, obviously, some bits and pieces for the, the hippos here as well. Stuck one down in this corner, um, you know, just to try and encourage the animals to come right the way down here. And they do, I have seen them over here. Um, got some of these, I reused this same board again around the outside because I, I like this design. It's nice and simple, um, so there's no harm in using, using that again. Uh, let's head on in and show you what I've done. Actually, let's go this way, quickly nip out. And nip up here. So this is the bit that backs onto the saltwater crocs. So you've got the crocodiles on this side, and then if you turn around, hey presto, hippos and flamingos. And you can see my new roofs over here, so we'll go in and have a look at that. Uh, a couple more boards up here. It's quite a nice viewing area actually up here. Having you know the you've got the crocodiles over on this side, and then this side you've got the hippos and the flamingos. Um, so it's quite a nice little place to wander around on this this raised walkway here. So if we go on in here, nothing too fancy in here. I've got some benches and stuff down. So I quite like this uh, this roof that I did. It's very simple again. What I did, I kept the old roof in place so that it looks nice under here. So you've still got the old asphalt roof underneath. And then all I did was put the beams down the, the edges and then these Australian planks along here, nice and random at the ends, and then just copied and pasted it around four sides and then slapped a couple on the on the sides here. Each, each of the four roofs has got a, a random configuration of these sideways bits. I, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't know why I did that. It just, it just looks nice. It looks like, you know, a bit little bit random sort of done on purpose but, but random at the same time uh, I don't know I like it it's a bit bit of whimsy for you and then obviously a little post at the top because the the posts don't look very good there so I just stuck a little one of the arctic posts up there I've uh, got the picnic benches down the bottom so all, all of these things have one of these at the bottom here which looks nice but there's still plenty of walking room so people can come and go uh, and then I put these these feet on all of these pillars, <coughs> excuse me, all of the pillars around here, I've got these wooden bottoms on because uh, the posts didn't look good as they were. But it's just a little detail there, just these bits, um, but again, it, it it just finishes them off and makes it all look um, just that little bit nicer, more aesthetically pleasing. And then in here, uh, I, I didn't like just having these wooden edges, so I've gone with the Australian word, I think it is. Uh, yeah, Australia wood curved bit around the bottoms and then I did a, a bit of decoration around here just just sort of randomly finding different textures of wood 
um, a few of these or sort of Africa looking bits on here as well nothing too much really um, just to uh, oh, game's just lagging a little bit there um, yeah just to just to brighten in that shop front up a little bit uh, and then back here uh, the again in each of these four viewing platforms I've got the two different information boards with uh, the barriers I had to lower the barriers down it's very hard when you're building if people aren't walking around you can't always judge the heights but these things were, were sort of twice the height and they were way too tall and uh, so I had to lower those down so yeah that's kind of the whole thing that's that's what I should so let's have a, a look from up here um, it's all uh, it's all come together really well actually I'm really pleased with this area I'm going to be careful not to tilt the camera up because I don't want to ruin the next episode. You can see the hippos running around down here. They love it in there. So yeah, there we go. That is my hippo and flamingo paradise. And I absolutely love it. I really do. I think it's, again, it's, uh, I keep saying this, but it, it really is one of my favourite areas that I've done so far. It's, it, it's come together better than I expected. I think it looks really nice and natural. So I'm really pleased with how... Uh, how I'm, I'm getting to grips with with the foliage and and how to make it look real because uh, it's not always easy when you're doing foliage and rock work it's not always easy to to make it look real especially when you're doing a lot of copying and pasting um, so again with the, the rock work it's it's just random enough that you don't look at it and go oh he's just copied and pasted you know you just just by mixing up the pattern a little bit and sinking more bits in out here at funny angles and whatever it, it makes all the difference uh, so yeah really 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 pleased with how this has come out and uh, I will leave it there I hope you've enjoyed it look at that it's my probably my biggest area I think so far just about although actually the elephants is pretty big as well isn't it <laughs> there's a rather large box over on the left there that's because I'm hiding something that I don't want you to see um, so there we go so I will leave you with that view of my flamingos I uh, hope you had fun thank you very much for listening to me as usual I do appreciate your company and your feedback and I will hopefully see you in the next one so take care and I'll see you soon bye for now